Creative Labs, the company that ruled the DOS world with its Sound Blaster sound call since 1990. Practically every DOS game had an option in a setup to choose some kind of Sound Blaster for sounds and music. And what was more cracking than to be able to choose either Sound Blaster 16 or Sound Blaster R32, maybe only Gravis Ultrasound or Roland CC. Natural evolution for R32 was Sound Blaster R64, launched late 1996 in two versions, let's call this one standard, and the better one is called Gold. There were basically three differences. The Gold's got more memory, half Mac versus 4 Max, it's got gold plated RCA connectors and a SPDRF output. Or just four to four difference. The Gold's got no amplifier, so if you rely on your headphones, you're out of luck. Unlike the R32, which was upgradable by SIM memory modules up to 28MB, R64 used proprietary memory modules for obvious reasons, which are rather difficult to find these days. And unfortunately I don't have one so I can't test it together with the card. There are two additional possibilities to increase the memory though. First one is quote unquote fan-made memory card called OSIM. This option uses 30 pin SIM memory modules. On the second one is called SIMCON and that allows you to use 72 pin SIM memory modules to upgrade the O64's memory. Creative's memory modules were available in four sizes, 4, 8, 12 and 24 megabytes. Memory limit for EMU 8000 is 28 megabytes, so if you want to use 32 megabytes SIM module in the SIMCOM, you can, but you'll end up with 28 megabytes anyway. Unlike the R32, the R64 lacks wavetable adder, so you can't use any kind of MIDI modules. Its backplate is rather unique compared to other sound cards from that era. The typical speaker out is missing because the gold lacks amplifier, and instead of speaker out and line out connectors, you can see these two RCA connectors. The gold can get quite pricey, this is what some people want for the card. As a part of Sound Blaster family, it should be compatible with Adlib, older Sound Blaster, Sound Blaster Pro or Sound Blaster 16, and even all 32 cards, and I wonder how much compatibility it actually retained. Installation ran pretty much without any problems. What was the problem though? Was it in the card proper? Right after the installation, you won't be able to use MIDI for some reason. You need to run manually a CTCM program, which initializes the card, and then AllUtil program, which initializes the MIDI part of the card. The installation won't add these utilities to AutoExec automatically. As if it weren't enough, there was a problem with setting up resources. If you want to use common or your whatever values for IRQ on DMA, you need to edit two files, AutoExec on CTPNP CFG files, replace the values to the ones you want to use, and restart the rig. It's pretty stupid, but there's no way around it. Another important utility is mixer set. As you may have guessed, it's a mixer utility where you can adjust volume separate for sound, MIDI, line, treble, bass, etc. Some games I'm gonna test the O64 with are compatible with Sound Blaster, some with General MIDI, some with MT32, and some even with O32. For FM synth, the O64 uses infamous CQM. Creative quadrature modulation instead of Yamaha's OPL3. The basic wavetable the Gold uses is utter rubbish. Good thing is, you've got 4 megabytes of RAM for bank loading, so if you don't fancy this crappy wavetable, you've got an option to load a different bank. Or do you? Well, the OUTIL program is used for loading different banks and to emulate General MIDI, Roland Sound Canvas, or MT32. There are a couple of drawbacks though. Some games can be set to use all 32 but with these drivers, it won't use any loaded bank, so you're stuck with the default bank that the O64 offers. In case of general MIDI, sound canvas or MT32, you can load a bank up to 4 MB, either the ones provided by the installation CD, or the ones you found online, or if you know how, you can create your own bank. Unfortunately, the O64 supports only banks with SBK extension on the DOS, which are version 1 banks, and they are quite rare unlike the version 2 banks, which are abundant but usable only under Windows. You can recognize them by SF2 extension. The default bank in the card's ROM and memory is 1 MB, so Creative has put 2 and 4 MB banks on the installation CD for you to use, but only in SF2 format, so if you want to use the card on the pure DOS, you have to look elsewhere. Another problem was, when I quit the game, sometimes the bank was unloaded for some reason and the next game didn't work until I loaded the bank again. As far as the FM synth goes, loading any bank is of course useless since it uses the CQM to play FM MIDI. 
First thing I wanted to know was the noise floor, and compare it to the O64 standard if there is any difference. And there is, unfortunately not too favourable for the gold. The sound was clear, depending on the game of course, and was working fine in every game I tested the card with. Just like most other sound cards, it's got 32 note polyphony, which means it can play 32 notes simultaneously. First game I tried was Alone in the Dark. At first I couldn't make it work, until I found out you need to initialize all your tilt first, even for the FM synth. Bioforge supports FM synth, O32, General MIDI and Roland SCC. While the FM and the O32 drivers were working fine, the General MIDI on SCC needed all util to enable emulation. However, the game crashes every time I try to run it with GM or SCC. Doom and Doom 2 outlooks the computer when using General MIDI or SCC driver. I also wanted to try different banks, and what are better games to try them with than Doom and Duke. Since the General MIDI driver doesn't work in Doom and Duke under the DOS, I had to try it under Windows.
Dune 2 is the first game that worked with GS on MT32 emulation. It sounds terrible though. Flashback didn't work with MT32 at all, but at least it didn't crash. Gabriel Noise diskette version crashes on both, GM and MT32. CD version, however, crashes only on GM.
Magic Carpet not only doesn't work with GM and MT32, but it's bloody slow for some reason when set to GM. Or couldn't make Rise of the Triad work with all 32. And of course, General Medic crashed the game.
TFX works with all the drivers. By using the SSC crash the game right after the intro and it's also a perfect example of how the MT32 should not sound.
Worth also know is the FM is a lot quieter than the wavetable. This is the actual difference in system shock. Well, to be brutally honest, of all the cards I've ever tested, the Sound Blaster All64 is the shittiest and the most unusable card for DOS, at least in terms of wavetable usage. There was no problem with sound in any game after to the card wave, neither was with the FM using either Adlib or any sound of Sound Blaster driver, except for the Sound Blaster 16 driver in Dungeon Master 2. Even though every game works fine with the FM synth, some could argue they don't sound fine since the O64 uses the CQM instead of the OPL3. Using the O32 driver worked quite well, but since it didn't work in Rise of the Triad for me, I can't be sure about other games I haven't tested. Most of the games didn't work with the GM emulation, so you're stuck with the O32 support, and even then you can't be sure it's gonna work. So if you want some sort of sound blaster with wavetable for pure DOS, get either O32 or SB32, they're much better choice. I was wondering if the O64 standard does the job better, and don't crash the games as the gold does, but it was exactly the same. In Windows, however, it's working perfectly. Every single DOS game that crashed under the DOS works perfectly fine in Windows. Moreover, you can load 4MB bank from the installation CD, which sounds pretty good compared to the default crappy ROM. You can install more memory and use larger and potentially better banks. For the doors, there are tons of better sound cards, which work better and sound better. For Windows, if you don't want to use FM synth or you'll be able to get more memory for bank loading, it's very good, not perfect though. Since the All64 standard is less noisy and certainly cheaper, I wouldn't bother with the gold, unless I wanted the card for the collection. And that's it, see you all in the comments, and don't buy the All64 gold, it's rubbish.